G'day guys, Dan from Certified Energy Solutions here and uh, today's an exciting day for us. I've been waiting for a slot in our install schedule uh, around our customers to actually fit in an upgrade for our personal property here in Gympie. So basically we've got an existing system that's been working perfectly fine since we purchased the property. Um, unfortunately it's getting to the point now where the energy bills are skyrocketing. We've got extra loads inside the house with extra people living here as well. So basically what we're seeing is our power bills have gone from a credit situation to a 900 a quarter power bill. So exactly like we tell our customers, no point in paying for power if you don't have to so we're leading by example here with our own solution and we've actually selected SIG Energy the SIG and store all in one solution for our personal property um, and that's going to comprise of a 10 kilowatt inverter 3 8 kilowatt hour batteries to start with we've obviously done the design and the performance so we're pretty sure we've nailed it straight off the mark um, and we've also got a big solar array going up on the roof as well with whole home backup and the hot water system which is electric taken off the mechanical timer and put onto the smart port in the gateway. So it's going to be a pretty cool uh, installation, very similar to what we do for our clients as well to help, help them out with their energy needs. Um, so we've already prepped the area here, so we're within compliance, a lot of regulations around battery installations, lead by example of course. So we've got our FC sheeting above us here. Obviously this is down on the man cave where the bikes are stored, so you know we're under the house, we've got wooden floorboards, so we've got a minimum distance we have to abide by which is 900 mil clearance from the top of the battery to the bottom of the floorboards. And we also have to make sure we've got FC sheeting within regulatory distance as well. Behind us we've mounted up an actual wall here specifically for the system using form ply. So we've got a nice strong structure where we can physically mount all the hardware which will contain the gateway, the inverter, the three batteries and obviously the relevant componentry here to make it all work. So let's go through the project, we'll do a bit of a look around show you the system that's actually been ripped down off the roof and we've got a big solar array going up obviously coupled with the system it's going to be an absolute powerhouse all right let's go through the journey So here we are around on the main switchboard on our home um, in the, the wild forest, we like to call it around the side of the house here. So Anthony in the background here is removing the old SMA inverter that served its purpose over the years uh, for our new mega system that's going in with the Sick and Store product. Now what we're looking at here is our main switchboard. It's been perfectly fine in compliance right up to this point. It's had a partial upgrade in the past, but we're basically going to be swapping out all these circuits here to RCBO safety switches. So you can see here we've got one there with a reset button and one there that's already been upgraded in the past with new additions to the property. But all these other ones, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six circuits there that will get those new RCBOs to make sure the house is within the Australian standards compliance. Any electrical work you do on your home, you have to ensure that obviously everything meets that code. Um, so that's a consideration if you're getting a new install and you've got an old switchboard, we might have to inform you that you've got to spend a little bit more to make sure that house is safe and compliant as part of that process. Now we're doing whole home backup here on the system, which means we're backing up all of our circuits inside the house. And to do that best, we're actually integrating our electric hot water system through the smart port on the SIGIN gateway. And essentially that allows to ensure the hot water system only draws that 4,000 watt draw through you know basically 9 a.m in the morning through to four o'clock in the afternoon it'll never discharge that battery system to actually heat up the hot water system we still get full control through the my sigan app though with the contactor relay and the built-in software so we can actually tell the hot water system to turn on through the night too if we ever tap out our hot water with multiple people inside the house um yeah drawing down power or hot water from that system so essentially we'll let the boys get on with the job before the weather turns bad and then we'll catch up later on when we start installing the sigan energy system in its allocated spot downstairs. Cool. Right, Anthony, so what are we doing here, mate? What stage are you up to, buddy? So we're just linking the gateway to the inverter. Yep. Um, and the comms. Yep. Uh, so then after that, we'll just run the DC through down straight onto the inverter. Yep. And then off these, we'll run off straight off there straight to the meter box. The main switchboard, yep. Yep. That'll be a fun run getting right up into the house, mate. That's, That's the, the young fella's job. <laughs> Here 
we are. This is the uh, the dungeon of the, uh, the the job for young Ash. So he's just finished running the AC cable run all the way from the main switchboard behind me there, all the way to the SIG energy system. So this is obviously where we have a supply AC cable run. We also have a return AC cable run for the emergency backup side of things. So the way that works is during normal operation, that standard AC run will function when you've got the grid in the background and basically it'll prioritise the solar and the battery system and inverter first for power usage internally. But then it's also got the option to be able to pull any balance of power from the grid if we exceed that system's capability. Now, based on our profile here for the site, this should really not happen. Um, but then you've also got a secondary AC cable run which sits there dormant that goes all the way back to the switchboard. And once again, if there's a grid loss scenario, that standard AC run actually detects that there's no AC frequency or power coming in from the grid. The second line will basically power up and then send power from the system back to the switchboard to keep us powered up. And obviously the emergency backup uh, circuit on this system, it's got a really fast changeover of zero milliseconds. So it's almost a U UPS level backup circuit. So boys are up on the roof. They've finished doing the cable run here. Anthony's around at the SIG energy system doing the connections there. And then shortly we'll be going back to the switchboard. All right, so we're up on the roof space here on our house. So you can see the old solar system uh, up on the roof there that's coming down today. And it's going to be replaced with 36 440 watch AA dual glass bifacial panels. So they're a bit of a mainstay of our product range um, and they perform really, really well. So might as well chuck them on up on the roof. Now, we've decided to go flat with our design because obviously we've got a much bigger solar array compared to a smaller system in the back that's actually up on tilt to maximize the performance. And obviously new panels now with the higher efficiency rating, you can actually get a lot more bang for buck by going flat and covering a larger surface of the roof to get better all day generation. We're looking around about a five to eight degree pitch. So at the moment, the guys are measuring up um, to work off the design that we've gone over on site this morning when they arrived. And they're gonna start basically putting down the tin feet, the all black mounting system, pull the old system down, get rid of the DC, basically start fresh again, hook it up to our new SIG energy system. So we'll get a couple of videos along the way, but uh, let's get stuck into it before the weather opens back up on us. See you around. So now the boys are onto the DC side of things. So you can see here, we've got some tails running down. We've got three trackers that we're using the available four trackers in the 10 kilowatt single phase SIG energy inverter. And basically for the DC cables here, we're using basically six mil twin. And we've got our earth here run down, which is earthing out the solar array on the roof to make sure it's all nice and safe. And if there's any direct lightning strikes on the roof, we're all covered as well. Um, but essentially, we've got our three trackers that are gonna be running down here from the roof, and that'll plug straight into the inverter trackers that are sitting there ready to rock and roll. So on to the next stage. So we're here with Lad at the moment. He's just doing the uh, the commissioning side of the SIG install gateway for our system here. Um, tell us a little bit about your cable runs, mate, as far as what we're doing there. Yeah, so we've just run a 16 mil four core on earth from the front of the house uh, main switchboard. Hmm. We've got the red coming in as our grid supply. Yep. Then we've got the white as our essential backup supply. Yep. And then we've got our blue as our hot water, which is in the smart port. Yeah, so I mean, that's really cool because obviously the smart port allows us to control through the MySigan app the hot water running time. So yeah, exactly. So basically run it through the day, you know, so, so we'll have probably set up to 8 o'clock in the morning, yep. through to about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. But also the benefit of doing that, obviously our hot water system runs 4,000 watt element. Yeah. So we don't want that element basically discharging from the battery through the night. Yeah, exactly yeah, right. So, yeah. you know, the way it's set up, that gives us ultimate control and we can even turn that smart contact to the relay on and off through the app, which is pretty yep. cool. And, and what's the reason that you go to like 16 mil for that kind of cable run distance? It's mostly due to our voltage drop, just because yep. we've got a fair run to the main switchboard. Yep. And yeah. And that, that obviously plays a part, anyone thinking about these systems, obviously the further you go, from that switchboard obviously the cost of materials yep. you know skyrockets exactly as well right. yep. copper's not cheap these days yep. um, so that is a factor as well when you're doing your design to make sure it's obviously going to be affordable with your desired location yep. while also meeting all the other codes and, and requirements as well for yeah, the location definitely. so yep. um, anything else i mean obviously we've got a data comms cable here as well 
Yeah, yeah. So this is just talking to the inverter. Yep. Um, so that'll be plugged in later on. Yep. And then, yeah, just commissioning mm. afterwards. Yeah. yeah, and that gives us yeah. our smarts to, to basically control that contactor and everything in that gateway too, eh? Yeah, exactly Yeah, yeah, right. cool. No, yeah. perfect. We'll let Lake get on with it. And Anthony in the background there wandering around. Yeah. So on to the next stage. Thanks, boys. Yep. Yeah. So we're on the final uh, process here. We just turned on the magic switch, so everything's all lit up, powered yep. up. But uh, we're here with Lad. Now, Lad, what have we had to do on the switchboard here is that final step to make sure the house is compliant. Yeah, so we had to change over a few things. We uh, put in this new board, yep. and we put in some RCBOs just so we're uh, matching compliance. Yep. And then we've labelled it all up. So we've got our EPS here, which is all the backed up uh, supplies. Yep. And then we've got our smart port, which is your hot water system. That's it. And then we're just uh, pr like set the parameter in the actual monitoring itself, so it's set up for the hot water to kick on between nine and four yep. uh, through the day. So it uses a combination of solar first, then it'll go to battery, and then grid is the last point of call yep. for that power usage. But we can also set the hot water system up to surplus solar only. There's quite a few options. Yeah, for that, that is handy, that. isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's brilliant software. Yep. So essentially, as you can see here, this whole house is basically set up for emergency backup support. Yep. Um, some homes might be partial. Yeah, correct. Which yep. we require. Just depending on battery size yeah, or whatever they're right. running in the house so, yep. so if they're going to be pulling too many amps for what they've got for the size of the system that's a big play isn't yep. it um, and obviously if we do that and we do a partial home backup the difference in this switchboard compared to a new one would be well you just have your certain circuits that you yep. want backed up yep um so just depends really what you're chasing. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. And then we'd have the addition of a uh, smart meter as yep. well, which is the, the power sensor yep. with the, the Zigan hardware. And that actually allows you to do that split kind of backup capability yep. in the system. So yeah, again, the boys did really neat work. The boys are all over it, eh? Yeah, no, definitely, you? no, good install. It's, um, yeah, awesome stuff. Awesome. There we go, done Thank and dustable, button this up now, and now we're on our SIG system. We're good to go.